I'd like to go through some general thoughts on fitting the oxygen 1s spectrum. Uh, this is an oxygen 1s spectrum for a, a metallic surface, and so it'll have some features that are common. Anytime you see a metallic surface, this will be a good starting point for that. This is actually a chromium decorative chrome, chrome plating surface that we're looking at. So we'll start with a, adding a background under quantification parameters, regions, we're going to create, slide over our endpoints. Go to components and we're going to add three peaks to start with. We'll move them around. The first peak is going to be our, our lattice oxide. So in this case it'll be mostly the, the chrome oxide. And generally the full width half max for the lattice oxides are quite a bit thinner than uh, for the hydroxide or, or water or organic species. Uh, the next peak up is going to be our, uh, it'll be things like hydroxides, uh, but there's also going to be um, defective oxide. A, a lattice oxide generally isn't, uh, for most cases, it's not just a nice pure lattice oxide. There's going to be some defect structure in it. And that defect structure has been shown to kind of coincide at the same binding energy as uh, the hydroxides. And we're going to constrain the width of that to be, say, a maximum of, of 2 eV. We'll set it at 1.5 to start with. The next peak up, we're going to uh, constrain to have the same full width half max as that hydroxide peak. If we do a quick fit we'll see how that fits in. So we're starting to get a fit there. Um, this peak is going to be, well, that one's shifted around. We'll move that down here and this one up here. This peak up here is going to coincide to uh, things like adsorbed water or water within the lattice. Um, there's also going to be a contribution from organic species. And that's a pretty good starting point right there um, with the fitting. So let's uh, add our regions and then we'll talk about some other things as well. The one thing with the oxygen 1s spectra that a lot of people make make a mistake on is that they don't they can tend to get focused on the one dominant species that they're interested in. So in this case, it's it's chromium. It's a chromium oxide that's mostly on this surface, and so they tend to assign that all of the the st structures that they see in the oxygen 1s peak are from chromium, but that's not the case. As you can see in this spectrum, we have some other contributions going on. We have some sulfur here, and the binding energy is at 168.6 so it's as a sulfate. So for every bit of sulfur we have we have four oxygens associated with it and those oxygens will be part of the O1s peak. If we look at a list of binding energies we see that the sulfate is at 532.2 so now we know what peak that can be incorporated in in the oxygen 1s spectrum. From the survey scan, we can get an idea as to how much sulfur is present uh, as sulfate in the oxygen peak. So we know we have sulfur at 0.6 atomic percent from the survey spectrum, times by 4, so 2.4 percent because there are four oxygens in the sulfate. If we divide 2.4 divided by 32.3, the amount of oxygen in the spectrum, times by 100, we get 7.4 percent. So there should be a peak that is has an area of 7.4 percent that's attributable to sulfate in the oxygen spectrum. So we can add that in. So sulfate should have a full width half max similar to the hydroxide and water peak so we'll constrain it to be the same full width half max as those. Uh, we're going to have it at a position of around 532.2 eV and that's going to vary a little bit up and down so we can set the constraints of where that peak is you know plus or minus 0.2 eV. 
We can do that with the other peaks as well. We may have to do that. We'll see how this fits. So let's try fit there. So that's fitting in pretty nicely. It's giving a value of about 10%. We can, act, we can actually go in and constrain that further if we want. If we want to set that that is actually 7.4%, we can just change the area. So we'll move the area down to say, I don't know, 800. And if we constrain that to be at 800 and refit, we're now at 7.9%. And you can fine tune that as you go along to get it to be the exact amount that you're getting from the other one. So that's, we've got the taking care of the sulfate. The next one to look at is the carbon. Now obviously carbon has oxygen associated with it. We've already fit that with various types of oxide. And we can actually figure out what those different things are and how much contribution it is uh, that goes into the, to the peak as well. If we take a look at the binding energies for the oxygen species in, in organic compounds, you can see there's quite a range. We go from anywhere down to 531.3 all the way up to 534.0. So we need to, to note that in our XBS spectrum. If we really want to push the limits, there's actually a calculator that we've developed that takes all the values that you get out of the carbon 1S spectrum as well as the values of for oxygen and carbon that you get out of the survey spectrum and you can calculate how much of the organic oxygen is part of the oxygen 1S spectrum. But that's a little bit beyond what we want to do here. So getting back to the oxygen 1S spectrum, we'll note that the one peak for hydroxides and defect oxide is at around 531.6 EV. And that's well within the range where organic oxygen can be. So we should add in that as well that organic oxygen can be present. And that pretty much sums up uh, what we have for this, this oxygen peak. Um, you always have to remember that oxygen can come from multiple sources and you need to account for all of that within the oxygen 1S spectrum.